What's up, guys? It's October 15th, 2024. Halfway done with the month. That's pretty cool. Bears finally got a bear trend. We got a bear trend day in the form of a pullback at range highs. Not the best for bulls. Um, let's see this. I want to see something here. Okay, put that here. Put that here. Put it at the bottom of the pullback. Bulls got one. Barely got one to one. Depending on where you buy. Buy your body. Look at the 45 minute chart. We see three three bars in the morning. Okay, that's a micro channel for the bears. Let's go one to one. What are the probabilities? Are the probability is that we go from this bar here. Is it is the is it the probabilities higher that we go up or down? It's down. And bears meet 45 minute bears make their one to one. Markets in the form of a pullback. We are at range highs. There is a gap open still that my gaps. Sometimes I forget to draw the gap. There's another gap right here. And bear, if we're range bound, bears are going to come and close this. Bulls want to keep it open. Bigger. Okay. Yeah. Save that. So bears are testing this gap. They want to close it. The market's just opened up too. Let's see. Ooh, look at that bear bar. Still selling the EMA. All day you could sell the EMA and make a lot of money. In the morning we had a tight trading range. You could definitely catch 1R, 2R of this. Um, I went short on bar 11 because I saw bar 6, 7, 8, and 9 as a 3 bar micro channel. Bar 5 isn't breaking any highs. Excuse me, bar 7 isn't breaking any highs. Have an opening small gap up, a double top, a sell off, pull back into the EMA, it sells off. Right away, all the bull bar bars are getting shorted, but it's a, I think it's a hard short in the morning because of this bull rally. But once we see 12, 13, 14, that's a distinguishing feature for the day. This was this is where I made my bread and butter today, and I got short like that. I was filled. I actually hit out pretty quick around the low of 12, so I didn't get filled where I should. But you would make one to one quicker if you were short. Here's another three bar micro channel. So here we can go like this. And then we get short on the one of the pullbacks here. And that was met. You see? So if we see bar 37, we ask ourselves, is it a reversal? Let's see? Like one pullback, like two, rally. Is it a reversal? So at this point in time, is it more likely the Market's going to go trading back up here, or is it going to trade down here, or do we go sideways? With this much selling pressure and multiple gaps open, I think the chances are that we go sideways to down. And then we want to play from one to one. We put it at the top of the pullback. You can put it here, but you sit through something, put it here. That's meant pretty cool. That worked out. So again, the first micro channel was meant one to one. Then we get another micro channel, bars 11, 12, 13, and 14, with multiple gaps open. And we get a deep pullback. There's a lot of wedge tops today. It's easy to get caught. Bulls have a rally right here. Rally one, rally two, and a small rally three. This creates a wedge top with bear pressure under the EMA. 26, 27, 28, 29. Second leg, leg one, pullback, leg two. We rally again. Again, another wedge top. 32, pullback, 34, pullback, 36, 37. Wedge top into the EMA. Look at the only bar that the only bull bar above the EMA today was 37, and that was followed. The follow through was a bear bar. So the only two bars we got above the EMA kind of came in the form of a two bar reversal. Good for the bears, bad for the bulls. I know. You know, everyone saw this rally. This we've been rallying for quite some time, so I can see how there is some oscillation around the EMA. 45 minute EMA, five minute EMA. They're both 20 EMA. Here we're going more sideways than down. So bears are going to want to get the breakout. Boys are looking for the reversal. One to one, to one is met of this range. And it looks like just about two to one was also met. Two to one was also met. So really good day for the bulls. Excuse me. Really good day for the bears. Um, Like one pullback with two. Leg one, pull back leg two, pull back leg three, pull back leg four, pull back leg five. 
Small pullback bear trend. Bulls are getting trapped. Every time a bull hits out, that adds the bearish pressure, helping with the bear trend. We trade with the gaps. I don't, I'm not looking for reversals. Trading in the side with the gaps open will always help you stay on the right side of the trade. But remember, that's in a just trend trending environment. When we're in a when we're in a range bound environment, gaps will get closed. And that's why you see bulls trying to close all these gaps. The bus, the best the bulls can get today is probably a range. It's very rare that we go from bear trend to bull trend right away. So the best this was the best the bulls can do today. So that's some that's saying something after a rally for several days, months. Bulls cannot keep any gaps open. And this is also the first pullback. This is the first decent amount of bars collected below the 45 minute chart. The way I read this 45 minute chart is the same exact way I read the five minute chart because price action is fractal. So this is the five minute 20 EMA. This is the 45 minute 20 EMA. This is the 45 minute 20 EMA. This is the daily EMA. This, this blue line is this blue line. This green line is this green line. So do you see how you can literally take away the time frame and read the chart the exact same way? One to one. I, I'm a fan of this. I didn't catch this intraday, but that's a pretty nice one to one right there. Just how it's set up, how it visually looks. So yeah, many gaps open. Where are the trades? So I got short here and I uh, I shorted this bar and then shorted this bar and got out around here for a couple points. I missed this whole cell. I was just dealing with some prop firm stuff. Um, multiple gaps open. Bulls cannot close the gaps. And then we start to sell off again. And within this cell, we have a lot of trades. Like you, uh, A newer trader is going to look for a swing. The expert's going to scalp in and out. I'm kind of shifting. I'm trying to learn how to scalp in and out. So look, four bar micro channel, one to one is met. Again, three bar micro channel. You can short the lows, you can short the pullback, that's met. Another three bar micro channel. Do so you see how many trades we could have pieced together? All the same context met. And then we start to get a little more sideways and it breaks out. But oh my Discord. Here. So there's a pullback, sell off, very deep pullback, and that's actually not met. Actually, let me see something. Yeah, it's still not met. So once the opposite side gets a micro channel within a trend, aka 74 through 77, we can save a range bound. The trend is over because we in a bear trend, we don't see a bull channel. In a bull channel, we wouldn't see a bear trend. Uh, excuse me. In a bull trend, we wouldn't see a bear channel. This shows two-sided trading. Bulls are now making money in a bear trend, so it must not be a bear trend. We must be in a range bound environment. Market cycle goes trend breakout channel range bound so where are we in the market cycle we have the breakout 15 starts to channel because that shows bear bulls have stepped in we go more sideways and we channel lower here we have somewhat equal highs double top but then we start to get higher lower highs here 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 and then finally bulls take out the structure and we go range bound but that happened to eod one to ones, a lot of one to ones. Let me delete these. So we have the opposite channel here. Bulls rally, sells off 18, and they get another two legged pullback, three legged pullback. Like one, pullback, like two, pullback, like three. With this much bearish pressure, I wouldn't be looking for a reversal until we see multiple gaps start closing. Bears see this as close enough to the EMA and the short. The EMA represents the average price. And right now, the market is trading below the average price, so bears want a chance to short the best price possible. In this moment in time, the best price possible was the EMA. They don't get that. It fails a couple points below. However, here, we pop up above the EMA for the first time over since bar 9. We've been under the EMA, so bar 9 to bar, you can say 36, kind of. We've been under the EMA. That's over 20 bars in the EMA with multiple gaps open, so that's a trending environment, always in short. EMA is sloped. If you're looking for longs, you got to understand what you're doing. You're trading against the always in direction. You're like um, your fish swimming upstream. It's easier to trade going with the flow. That took me a long time to understand. So please, if you guys have questions about that, ask me, guys. I'm trying to put money in your guys' pockets. Um, with that being said, I trade with a prop firm. I'm chasing that payout too. 
multiple times. I've I've requested payout earlier this year and then blew up and I came close to it. So I'm still chasing the dragon. I feel like I'm getting closer. My training is getting more and more consistent. And yeah, so here we have multiple gaps open, three-legged pullback, and then we sell off again. One, two, three, four. There's a lot of overlap within the sell off, right? Twenty seven has a big tail, tail on thirty twenty excuse me, tail on twenty nine. We'll see this as a double bottom and they wanna they wanna swing higher. Unfortunately that fails as they get three pushes up, like one, pull back like two, pull back like three. Wedge top into the EMA, or you could say resistance, you could say range highs, you could say there's so many ways to frame this. Thirty six is testing the high here. Sells so off. 17 is testing the high here, 50% of this gap. That's a good sell too. I don't trade with limit orders, but I know there are people who have, who lace these with sell orders and they just want to get filled higher and higher and sell off. With the expectations, we see lower prices. A leg two move is complete once we trade one tick past the extreme. What do I mean by that? 15 is the extreme. And on 45 over here, we trade one pass, we trade one tick past it. Or you know what, even on, I think actually on 30. On 30, we trade one tick past the level 15. So the leg two is complete. It got its leg two. Leg one, pull back, leg two. Bears that got trapped here are able to buy back shorts and it causes a momentary, a uh, small rally. The bulls that get out here are able to buy lower and they scale out. They hit out of their longs here for a few points and bears sell highs. They sell the EMA. They want the average price. And then we get another four bar micro channel. With the given context for today, multiple gaps open, three bar breakout, and this breakout, look at this breakout. You know, you might say this is climactic, but look, I'm not looking at one to one, I'm looking at the size of the bar. So this this here to that there, it's they're all orderly. It's a it's a four bar breakout, but the last three bars are around the same size. It is climactic for sure, there's no doubt about that. But what we could say it was a breakout that had some order to it. And when we see breakouts, we want to see order an orderly we want to see uniform size bars. This is another good example. 56, 57, 58. Delete that. 56, 57, 58. Three bars lower. And they have a gap here. I'll trade price action top by Al Brooks and Ali. Moin Afshari. If you guys don't know them, please leave a comment and check them out. Like one, pull back like two, pull back like three. So many leg one, leg twos. The way I like to trade it is I wait for three, four bars to print and I decide is this strong enough to get a leg two or a reversal. If it's a reversal, I just wait. If it's a leg two, I take the trade. It doesn't mean the market cycle is resetting. I'm just saying that there's enough bear momentum that when we get that pullback, we're gonna get the leg two. So if, let's say you missed this sell off, but you say, wow, that's really strong. But we sold off right into range lows, so I don't want to short lows. We'll just give it a few minutes or in this case, give it about 30 minutes. 40 minutes, pull back into the EMA. So again, what are the probabilities? Are the probabilities higher? Is it more? <laughs> At this point in time, does it make more sense for the market to go up one R or down one R of this leg? Multiple gaps open, pretty far away from the EMA on the daily chart. Makes more sense to go down. So you see this and you get short and that's meant. Wow, while you're in this trade, you see these set of bars or bars here. And you're like, you know what? I want to press my position. This is another setup within a setup. You add here and you get filled again. And then you say to yourself, wow, this whole leg, this whole leg that I was just trading is strong enough to get its own leg too. So you see how this, um, you can start to scalp and you can really have some, uh, what is it? You could be, you start to be more flexible when you see these setups. I used to just try and look for one trade to hold all day, but the more I learn about price action, the more money there is to be made, the more we, more setups there are. And the setup is the same, you know, three bars, four bars, five bars, wait for a pullback. Where are we going to make one to one? Wow, these three bars are strong enough for its own one to one. So I get short. I didn't get short, but I'm just an example. You get short here, it's made. I hit out the trade, and then I see these whole bars as its own leg. And I'm like, wow, that can also get a leg one, leg two. You see that? Then here we start to get a little bit sketchy. We're low in the trend, we're late in the day. Bar 72 is coming up. Nonetheless, we see this as a leg. 65 through 69. Wait for a pullback. 
and we well actually if you short the high there you almost make it short the high here you almost make it so it's interesting if you happen to get the high tick you would make that but that's pretty hard to do you guys see how we can start to piece the market together between as long as we count legs and keep the market cycle in our heads we can find trades and we can avoid bad setups look at this if so if you're looking for a breakout right how remember i used to look for breakouts and i get stopped out and then now i'm the train three bars at a time and ex this is the exact reason i would take a bar like 37 looking for a reversal and trade against the origin direction had i waited three minutes i mean 15 minutes three more bars look it's a sell it's not a buy this is a fade this is the first pop above the ema these are some really important concepts that i've un i've heard but i wasn't utilizing until just the last two months and i feel confident when i trade now you know a lot of things are starting to click and i hope i can transfer that over to you guys so please ask me questions if you guys do because i will try my best to answer them bulls you got a gap here it's under the ema it's a weak gap right 31 through 33. it's a bear bull bear so that's weak we want to see gaps like this bear 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 that's great let me draw these gaps in. These these reviews are starting to get a little bit longer. I, I kind of like that because we're talking about trades. Um, bar 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 analysis is great. I've tried it a few times, but I think talking about trades is just a little more natural for me. And I'm seeing it time and time again. People are asking, how do you find trades? How do you manage trades? Entries truly do not matter, guys. I have some friends who trade micro channels and we generally see the same things but we're all entering completely different you know i have some friends who like to short the high bull bars i have some friends who like to take the stops and when the bulls get stopped out they go with the flow there's so many different ways the, it doesn't matter because we're all training the correct context it's context then entry context 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 how do we read context we focus on the market cycle what do we do when we look at the market cycle we look at the leg count are we in a breakout are we in a channel are we in a range Bulls are bulls are barely making money. They're not really making money to above bars. You have to you're really not making money unless you have blind limit orders set. So where are we in the market cycle? Well, we have the breakout. We have an opposite bar and now we're channeling. And then look at the channel. Finally, bulls make money. This is a range bound price action. See? Bulls bought the bar instead of selling. So what time is it? 22 seconds. Um I was just about to wrap this up. I want to see if this bar is going to sell or is it going to reverse? Bulls got a higher low here. These bars are starting to grow. So unlike these bars were orderly, these bars are starting to grow. One could say that's bullish and growing. Another one could say it's becoming climactic because they're not orderly. I don't want to wait for this bar to close, but I do want to see if it's going to sell on camera. Again, a pop above the EMA and it gets sold. Pop above the EMA. I'm willing to bet this is going to get sold. Maybe it tested 50%. This is a strong bar. This five minute bar is three 100 second bars. So we know it has a strong close. The 100 second chart traders are going to look for one to one. All right, guys. I'm going to keep it short, keep it simple. Hope you guys did good. Hope you guys learned something. If you learned something, share the show, hit follow. Let me know. Let me ask, ask me some questions. I trade price action and that's all I focus on. I'm not into any of the other stuff. Price action taught by Al Brooks and I study Ali Moin Ali Moin Afsari who runs Quant Systems. Check them out. Have a good one guys. Share the show if you learned something. I'll talk to you later. Bye.